summer for seasons change we still keep it together hey beverly hills 90210 fans are you ready to dive deep episode by episode Storyline by storyline, character by character, as we break down the making of your favorite zip code with your host, <laughs> Charles <laughs> Rose. Did I say that? Yeah. Harry oh, Mullen. This heinous thing about the, the, the real person. And we're going, what? We're getting rid of this guy. Pete Ferrero. I'm feeling wonderful. <laughs> Kathleen <laughs> looks crush, TV crush worthy. Like so many special guests. And all your questions. Live on the Beverly Hills 90210 Show. Oh, yeah. And we've got a dance now. Hey, this is really exciting. Um, Kelly Tata is joining Chuck and I here to talk about her dad. Obviously, if you're watching this, you know who her dad is just from her last name. Um, uh, your dad is Nat on the series. Um, how are you, Kelly? How's everything going with you? Um, things are going well, you know, you got to deal with life on life's terms kind of thing. And, um, that's what I'm doing. But, uh, my father, uh, the, um, I mean, um, he's going through quite a bit as he's up in age, but, uh, how old is he Kelly? Do you know? 85. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, uh, I just had an insurance, uh, had to redo my insurance and they're, and they're plotting, you know, you, you do those things, you know, well, the, this year and this year and this year and this year. And they had me living to 90 and I turned to them and said, do you know me? I mean, <laughs> how is that going to be? But you know, it's really, you know, the eighties are tough. You know, it's surviving the eighties is a tough thing for all people. And, yeah. uh, you know, I remember seeing your dad at uh, at Luke's memorial, and he was very happy to see everybody. But clearly, there was infirmities there and things, and it's it's very hard on kids. I know, and I'm I know you talk to people about it and getting support. So, I hope uh, it, it it's working for you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. Let's go back in the day. Uh, your dad's on nine hundred two and zero. What was that experience like? for you as a kid uh seeing him acting and look i've told you before and i speak for fans here that this show we all love all the characters but there's something very special about what your dad brought to 90210 um and was also um allowed to bring to 90210 i'd like to add yeah oh absolutely i i i you know thank you for saying that my background you know was journalism it was not drama. I took drama in high school and wow. I chickened out on being an actor, which I never regret. But hmm. um, at the same time, I was a journalist. I hadn't been with actors. I don't know what actors are thinking. So I was very open to that aspect of the creative process. In fact, I'll be truthful. When I walked into a casting room for the first time with to see Luke, a 902 and 0, for Luke Perry and James Eckhouse the first time, that had only been my second day ever in casting in my life. Oh, I, wow. I wrote the Beach Boys movie for ABC back in the 80s, and the producer knew that if he'd let me sit in, in uh, casting, he'd get free rewrites. Because <laughs> I could hear the stuff. They were, so I was there. But so I really didn't know very much. And, I, and believe me, I learned a lot from the actors. All of them, your dad included. Chuck, do you remember... Were you there for for Joey's um, audition at all? Oh gosh, yes. And it, I think Kelly, I don't know if you know this story. It, it's really a good one. So your dad comes. You, the, the everybody was really excited. Or well, my casting director, the director of the episode that he was coming in on, which was our second one called "Every Dream Has Its Price Tag," and <laughs> we were establishing there was a there was a diner in Beverly Hills, the Peach Pit, and and yes, he would give a job to Brandon who needed a job. And um, there was an actor who was really well known in Hollywood named Frank Gorshin, who uh, was one of the actors on, on Batman. He had played mm -hmm. a character and he was a stand up comedian. And he came in and he came in like he was doing me a favor for being there, doing all of us a favor for being right. there. And only it was me, Tony Shepard, 
And Tony uh, Shepard, you know, we've uh, known him forever. Well, I do know that. And <laughs> Tony and me and, and Diane Young was our casting director. It was uh, and the director of the episode. They come in and then the next thing and before the whole thing starts, even before Frank walks in, she says, and there's a friend that Duke Vincent wants you to read. I said, fine, I don't care. Let's just do this. You know, I'm I'm under the gun in fifty thousand different ways. Let's get this over <laughs> soon. I gotta be in another meeting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The stress of running a TV show. And um, you know, so Frank comes and goes, your dad comes in. I immediately he does, by the way, a great reading, very happy to be there, and much more to my idea of what we needed. And um and I remember the shocked look on my director's face when she said, well, we're obviously going to go with Frank Gorshin because, it, no, 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 we're tiring the other man. We're hiring Mr. Tata. And, and, it, and, and you know, it, you know it, it, and believe me, I did not hire him because he was Duke Vincent's friend. I hired him. Oh, because I, he was I do perfect. believe you. <laughs> I, I, I was perfect in the part. And by the way, I just should add, I think you'd be interested in knowing your core relationship with what we did in 90210, that the same thing happened when we were interviewing for a uh, for Jim Walsh. The, the network decided to recast it. Mm -hmm. And the first person that Diane Young brings in is, is a kind of an accomplished theater actor who had some credits. And he was so awful. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't believe it. And I so I remember when that ended, I actually, I don't think I made Diane cry, but I did say she knew he wasn't good. And I basically said, um, please bring people in who want to be here. <laughs> and, then, and, and then what happened for a lot of the first season is, is that the actors that we would have wanted to be weren't showing up. Right. You know, we weren't getting that. And I think the first actor who came in that was like a mark, wasn't even a marquee name then, but became it, of course, was um, um, the, the actor from Friends. Um, oh, um, mm hmm Chandler. Chandler. Yeah, but that's not his, that's his name on Friends. Oh, God, yeah. am I senior? Don't get old, Kelly. It sucks. <laughs> you have these senior moments. You know, uh, he played the inevitable. tennis player, and he, yeah. was, he was great. And it was, and then we started to get better actors from better agencies getting submitted. Ma Matthew Perry? Matthew Perry. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to call him Mark Perry, but that's a producer, writer, a guy I used to know. What, so Kelly, what about growing up on the world, in the world of 90210, your dad being on the show? What was that like for you? It was fun. I mean, I, because my father has been an actor, you know, 9 million years before I was around, I knew how to somewhat behave on a set. Um, so it's like, I wasn't in anybody's way. There was no issues, blah, blah, blah. But my dad, um, he, he just loved working with everyone. He loved it. He loved the camaraderie. He loved the energy. And he always told me uh, that he loved uh, rehearsing with Luke. That that was, he, that the two of them would get so into it that it was like, you know what I mean? So, um, and a lot can be, you know, you can have one sentence and you can say 8,000 things. And some people are, are masters at doing that and others aren't. And some fall somewhere in the middle. But I think that um, the opportunity, and I'd like to use that as an operative, the opportunity that my father was given. Because it could have been just, here's your mega burger. Here's your shake. Sure. No, I could have. You're right. I mean, yes. There, uh, yes, I would think that, you know, as the writer, you would develop the character a little, you know, more or evolve or something to that effect. Didn't have to happen, but it worked beautifully. And um, everybody, I mean, he got along with everyone. They all got along with, I mean, you know what I mean? Like Jason and my dad always got along. Ian and my dad always got well, along. He was their surrogate father in, in a lot of ways on the set. He and Paul Wagner had different roles, but they were both father figures to the guys, I think. Right. In a lot of ways. Right. You know, 902 and I was a huge show. Um, and your dad's on one of the hugest shows in, in that time period. Was Were you around him when he got recognized? Did you yes. see? Yes. Um, 
But you know what I mean? Like it, it's par for the course. It's just, it's a high paying gig and you know, that's what comes with the territory. Did he you enjoy it? I mean? Did he enjoy fans coming up to him and saying, Mr. Yeah. Daughter, Mr. Daughter, Joey, Joey? Yes. Know? Yes, he did. He, you know, <laughs> he never wanted to, um, you know, for lack of a better word, like ignore a fan or somebody that just wanted to meet him. Like he, he would stay and, you know, an extra hour or so and just like sign things. And, mm. uh, you know, he's, he's a good man. And uh, I'm glad that you guys kept him safe for 10 years. <laughs> what, uh, what can you say? You, you talked about being on the set. Right. And, and, and I, of course, as, as, as I think the, the, um, many fans of this podcast know I was only on the set in occasion. It wasn't my role to stay on the cat. I would go to the set when I wanted to, depending on what was being shot or the difficulty. Once in a while, Aaron Spelling would say, you go to the set and, but not that often. So did you used to come to our studio a lot? Were you there a lot? Yeah, yeah actually I was. Um, my dad would take me with him. Nobody had any qualms with it. Um, you know, because I also understood that it was business. So I didn't want to overstep my boundaries, even at that young of an age. But I mean, I grew up watching all this stuff and it's just amazing. Like everybody clicked so well, the chemistry between everyone was insane. And I don't know if you can ever duplicate or replicate that anywhere on earth with anything. It was just amazing. And you know, like, I don't know, my, my dad just, that was like our second family after my parents split, you know, that was like, for him, that was family and for me as well. So well, it's interesting. You said that, you know, we just had watched on the, um, on the podcast. I think you're, you're, you're dropping it tonight, right? Pete? That's right. Yeah. I just dropped it already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, it was, about the, uh, yeah. it was about our high school uh, commencement episodes. The last one that we did the two hour special where, where Gabriel Carteris is the valedictorian and is Andrea and she has her speech and she talks about these friendships will go on and this and that. And it's uh, clearly what, you know, we would be saying on the show for the characters because we want the audience to, to absorb that and 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 um, bask in that and feel a part of that, but here you are in real life, thirty years later, and these people have st all stayed together. And I don't think that happens in cast. They have yeah. reunions and they're surprised to see each other, et cetera, et cetera. This was a very special group at a very special time. I think maybe part of the reason was is because nobody expected it to last beyond twelve. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> but does your dad was did he talk to you about like the show and what he was doing and all that did you i mean you had a good understanding of what was happening and i had a good understanding except for once and uh when my dad had the heart attack oh. i didn't know it was fake and i was like 11 or whatever yeah, so right. i run in and like cut and i'm like oh god i'm so sorry like you know because yeah. i didn't know it's like i didn't get the memo kind of thing i'm 11. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting. I have two thoughts about that particular scene. One of them, I remember somebody's reaction at the network. I, I can't tell you who it was. So this is this. You guys must be really hard up for story if you're having Nat have a heart attack be your A story. Oh right? wow! And and and, uh, and I, you know, said, well, you know, no, we're using it in this way and it allows us to do this because there's a reason we just did. It was it was purposeful? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because then we had other people come in. There was investment. There was all sorts of things that happened. It also showed that the Peach Kit was kind of precarious, and Peach Pit was a character. Second one, but much more personally, is uh, what five weeks after I leave nine hundred two and O, and I've gone. Uh, to uh, an extensive trip with my wife in Europe, first time ever. And then we take the kids to Hawaii and come back. Five days later, I'm reading a, a, a new a 902 and 0 script from season six. And I feel something come down my arm. And I had written that in your, in that episode and went, Oh my God, I'm only 43, but am I having a heart attack? And indeed I was. So, uh, and oh my God. I, <laughs> the interesting thing I learned about men who have heart attacks in their 40s is they die because they can't believe they're having a heart attack. 
And that was, oh. you know, but I knew because I had written that for that scene. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it certainly it was involved in the writing with that scene, I should say. So yeah. um, made a big difference. So, so your father had great influence on me, uh, which he never knew, but he did. <laughs> yeah. Just on that reason alone. Bless your heart. I mean, that's a good point and a good question. You know, I mean, we've talked to a lot of people on this podcast and, and the cast members about how important your dad was to the show and just to them in general it made a difference in fans' lives and whatnot. How do you feel when you hear people say that to your dad or tell you about what what uh, what he's done for them? Um, my father is a very hardworking man and um, to come out here after the Korean War on the GI Bill and make something of yourself really says a lot. I think about your discipline and your passion and just just who you are, you know, that you have a backbone kind of thing. Um, I, I'm i proud he's my father, even if, uh, God forbid, <laughs> even if he wasn't on 90210 for 10 years, exactly. he's my father no matter what. I love the man and that's that. But he um he always wanted me he always wanted me around because he wanted me to understand he 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 would always say to me there's show and then there's business you know what i mean he's like you got you got to understand both sides of that coin so um but anyway i'm veering off the point is is that i had be i mean i had beautiful times just beautiful times and watching him be so happy you know, like he lived to work and mm. to watch him in his element. Um, that was all I needed. And, you know, people that appreciate him. God bless. That's great. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's just it was it was humbling to watch. Do you have um, any this will be fun for some of the fans. Do you have any favorite episodes or moments for your, that of Nat's your dad's? The character. Uh, actually, my one of my dad's favorite episodes uh, was when Shannon Doherty, who I miss and I love you, if you can hear me, um, it was when she uh, came to work as Laverne. Yes, that yeah. was yes, and I have photos of Tori spelling that day that I actually put on Facebook. It was so cute. And Randy saw it and stuff. It was it was adorable. But yeah, like that was one of his favorite favorite episodes yeah. ever. It's just as so the right as the co writer of it, mine too. <laughs> <laughs> it was beyond. And you know, we we've talked about it. It was really we could have not. You know, Shannon embraced it and took it to another level, and we had no idea what was going to be. You just put the right words on the page, and oh, it'll be fun. She'll come in. She'll play a character her look, her voice, and, and, you know, it's, you know, we never even considered bringing her back as Laverne, which was, a, I think, a mistake, uh, basically. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the reasons is, since you mentioned it, you know, the network didn't particularly like that episode. They, they mm -hmm. thought it was very unrealistic. And the interesting part about that was, is that the network asked me, uh, you know, the focus was going to be on social drama. What's the social drama? What's this story? What's this story? What's this? Story? We did done so much social drama with Isn't It Romantic and BYOB and, and General Art of Listening that they said, can't you lighten it up? So they asked us to do a lighter episode, and of right. course, we could lighten it up. And uh. it was the beginning of our show's relationship to Hollywood. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that the fact that that, uh, that that there was a you know Brandon because the, the the other story in that was Brandon got to Hollywood um, you know into a series just a, a fluke of that kind of thing but you know we had obviously David Silver being Hollywood oriented uh, Steve Sanders being Hollywood oriented Brenda wanting an acting career so that we had three there and. The network did not really want us to, um, they, they realized why we went there, but certainly after I left, there must have been an edict, don't do show business stories, that it's not, it's not testing well in Kansas or something. I, I don't know what the conclusion was, because it was a really natural, and, and Larry Mullen and I have discussed this, it was a natural thing to do in episodes in season six and seven. 
you know, you 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 know, Ian in show business. I, that's who he was, Steve's character. So why, after he graduates college, do none of them use that as a resource anymore? One can right. sing, one's right. a, a manager. It was it was kind of a. I'll never understand it because I wasn't there at the times, especially as it goes on to seasons eight, nine, and ten, sure. where they had, you know, Brian and and uh, and Ian there. That's right. Even if Brenda, even if Shannon was gone. Yeah, um, I was gonna. You're, were you a fan of the show? Like, were you watching the show as you were growing up? Um, fans a big word for me. I appreciate people's work, but and however, of course, <laughs> of course, I watched the show with my friends, and you know what I mean. Like, I never found it odd. Like, oh, that's your dad. I was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know? I was gonna ask or even like. like I was going to ask you, like, identifying, like, okay, so you're watching the TV show and you're in, you're in school or whatever, and you know, you know him as Brian, not David Silver, right? Like, you know the right. real people. So it's like, is that is that good like good man, good man? Yeah, I was just asking if that was weird for you to be like on the set and be like, oh, this is oh, this is the sh they're making the thing that all my friends love so much, you know? You know? Well, the thing also was like I never forgot my place if you understand my meaning. Um, there was business being conducted, work being done, and I was, you know, not understanding of all facets, let's just see. So, you know, I would um, just go with the vibe of like, who wasn't working, we'd hang out, you know, in between and this and that, whatever. Yeah, um, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah just as long as I was, uh, you know, appropriately, where I should have been, you know, which is not in the way. Right. Um, <laughs> Did you, you know also, I, mean? I, I don't want to go down this path necessarily too deep, but I imagine that, you know, uh, some of your friends were really envious of, of the fact that your dad was on this and that you had that access and stuff. Was that uh, ever an issue for an 11 year old girl, 12 year old girl? Um, well, I mean, when the show started, I was 10. And when it ended, I was 20. So that's like a whole big chunk of your life right there. Right. Um, yeah, there are definitely, you know, let me just say chicks for lack of a better word. <laughs> um, that, uh, you know, were my age or went to school with me and, you know, kind of went behind my back to date my dad because he didn't know that I knew whatever. Um you know, I, scruples, morals, you know, important things, but um, not everybody got that memo, apparently. <laughs> but yeah, you know, whatever, I, as long as he was happy. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask you something else, because you used the word fan. So what what shows were you also fans of then and now? What what, what shows resonate oh, with I'm not you? a fan. I appreciate people's work, but, and however... Uh, you know, honestly, that was big. I mean, I was never, I was really never a TV person. Oh, okay. you know? well, like Sex in the City, you know, I was like 10 years behind. So, like, I get it now. <laughs> but, like, okay, so there's that, or, you know, there's a plethora of things. But I think that um, the show definitely helped a lot of people that I knew because it touched upon topics that no one had been talking about you know teen pregnancy and rape and this and drugs and you know so it was like um i think it was a really positive situation everybody got to learn something um whether you wanted to or not kind of thing if you were paying yeah. attention you would learn something yes well thank you for saying that we're all very uh us those of us involved with the show are very happy that uh Entertainment Weekly, what was it, the best 50 or the best 40? Best 50 teenage shows of all time. And uh, and given how the media uh, treated us when we were doing the show, you know, I kept thinking, okay, we'll be in probably like maybe number 36 or something. <laughs> and I kept being pleasantly surprised, pleasantly surprised. And to end up as number four meant a lot. I, I do think that, that possibly we could have been number three, but n given that you're going to put us at number four, but four was just really fine. And, and I, and I know from doing this podcast uh, and meeting uh, real, you know, fans, you know, not, not anyone connected, but real fans of, of the whole experience to, to hear that 
you know, women in their 40s and, and uh, 30s, 40s and 50s tell us that how much the show changed their lives for the better and how important it was to it. In addition to us doing the the during the starting this podcast during the pandemic, mm. right. people felt so isolated and, and mm. uh, disconnected, um, you know, means a lot. So I, I, I really do appreciate that it did resonate and that the stories that we did which at the time were, you know, could get from a cynical 90s audience a bunch of eye rolls. You know, we, um, right. you know, and, and you know, was the we, we, we ushered in the beginning of snarky in media because <laughs> they could be snarky to us. You said yeah. snarky. Um, but let me ask you this. I mean, you guys, you're going through a lot with all of this, what's going on with him. And for fans that are watching this, on a deeper level, what do you want people to know about about the man Joey Tata, who is he? What What do you want them to know? I know it's a pretty big question, but um, thank you for asking it, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm honored yes, to answer sir. it. He's a hardworking man. He's an honest man. Um, he's a straight shooter. He's a keep your word kind of person. Um, if he says he's going to do something, he does it. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end with him. He doesn't just, you know, randomly start things and then go, whatever. No. A whole lot of discipline in my father. And I have always looked up to him and respected him for that. Um, he loves everybody. <laughs> um, you know, that that might be like, I don't know, a, a family curse or something funny. But no, he, he loves everybody. And, uh, you know, he'll give you the shirt off his back. Um, you know, <laughs> his house, his that, whatever, you know what I mean? He just, he's a giver. And, um, you know, if you've ever met him, he cares and he'll care for the rest of his life because that's who he is. And if you haven't, you kind of have, you know what I mean? Like you kind of see who my father, Joey Tata, who I'm so very proud of, like he, he's not Liberace or I don't care. He's my father. No, no. It was so Pete. It was so beautiful to watch this, you know, just here's your mega burger to like things that really mattered. And it was a beautiful transition. It was in my opinion, beautifully done. Um, and I marvel to this day just how well everything worked. But anyway, to finish your question, um, He's a good man and, uh, you know, respect and, um, you know, suiting up and showing up are really big deals to, uh, to my mom. Right. He, he, I agree with you totally. He is a good man and all, all human beings are imperfect as we know, uh, ourselves included, but, um, he, uh, he was always a pleasure. He was always a smile. He always, um, uh, and, and was very kind to Karen and I, you know, when we had, uh, I remember it was particularly one, we, we were out at the beach uh, the summer after they graduated high school, because one of the things that we learned is that there's no family travel when you're doing a television series. You got to, running a television series, especially with 32 episodes at that point, mm -hmm. right. double ups and all the, the stuff we had to do. So we had a party out in our house in Malibu. And you know, I get it. The cast had to be on the set five days a week and they didn't really want to have their spare time having to mingle with the, the show again. They, 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 their, their show Monday through Friday, uh, you know, but they didn't, you know, Saturday and Sunday, leave me alone. So <laughs> they didn't really show up. And, uh, but Mr. Spelling did and, and Tori and Jenny, cause Jenny is, uh, is, is, is a real loyal to that and, and, and was very sweet to Karen and I, but your dad was came your dad and, and, and his buddy, Nikki Blair. And, yeah. uh, and I'll always remember that, you know, because really the actors, I remember this is a, kind of a funny story. I think I've, I've told it once Pete, um, you know, somebody after the first season, a, a, a woman calls me who went to my high school and my uh, elementary school who I had lost touch with whose daughter was getting bat mitzvah and wanted uh, uh, Steve Ian to come to the bar mitzvah, to drop in as a, as a celebrity. 
And I said to her, and she's now a Facebook friend. We remained friends for, for life after that. But I said to her, Diana, the only reason they show up on the set is because I pay them. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so we pay them, you know. So your yeah. point is strong. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So so but you know, only only good memories, only good thoughts. And I know he's struggling. And I'm sorry for him. I'm sorry for you. Yeah. And I'm sorry yeah. that uh, that that has to be the reality. But but it, it, it's so great seeing you. You look you look good. You look very you. good. And, um, and, and we, before I, Kelly, and before, I, you, before we go here, did has your dad ever made you a mega burger or anything? Absolutely like not. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, we like to live somewhat in reality every now and again. You know. <laughs> right. Amazing. Oh, great. Well, I'm finally glad. I know this is long overdue. I'm really glad you got to do it. You're very charming, and I wish uh -huh. you the best. Thank are you, you are, you, are you acting or writing, or do what? Are, what are, if people want to find you, or what you're up to? Um, you know, I started ballet at 30 because someone told me I couldn't, and it's been great. But I'm kind of like, eh. I, honestly, and yeah, Chuck Rosen. Oh my God, no, writing was my was my passion. And then I started modeling when I was young and it just kind of went that way. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I can well, appreciate I, it. I always say, I, you know, I taught at UCLA for a while writing and I always used to tell the one thing to my students is that, and to remember this, you know, there's no, there's no, you know, bar you have to, to climb to begin writing and writers write. So, you right. know, and if you can get into the habit of doing it, and I really like those things that they have, um, I, I, you know, the, the, when, they, when you do your own morning pages and those kind of things, where you just get to express yourself in print, handwriting, um, you know, I, I think that's always a good thing and a really good start to be able to begin to express yourself. And then once you can express for yourself, then you can express in, in other characters with who they are and what they right. have to say. Good point. Yeah. All right. Well, all right, Kelly. Now. Thank you so much for this. Again, I want to apologize too. I know it took a thank long time for this, for this all to happen, but I think the world of you and I think the world of your dad. I don't. I've never met him once, but I just feel connected to him through his work. So I think that speaks to something, and I think a lot of fans feel the same way as what I just exactly. said. So, well, thank you kindly. I you will welcome. relay the message. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you.